Hey there, and welcome back to Mass Effect 3. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Insanity walkthrough. In fact, today we are completing the last episode. Yes, today a seven year long journey finally comes to an end. If you go back in the channel's history, you'll find that one of the very first videos I ever published was the first episode of our Mass Effect 1 playthrough. I uploaded that on March 3rd of 2016, and today, well over seven years later, we have finally reached the end of the trilogy. Obviously, there were some breaks in between, but it is safe to say that this game has accompanied me for the entire duration of this channel's existence, and so it is definitely a weird feeling to finally close the lid on it today. Still, that is what we'll have to do, you voted for it and you'll get it, one grand finale that will last us for at least two hours, so I hope you're ready to join me for one last ride. Now, last time we left off after finally learning about the Catalyst, we found out that it is nothing less but the Citadel itself, which has been moved by the Reapers into orbit over where else but Earth, so that is where we need to go today to fight our last battle. Before we do though, there is one quick stop we have to make in the shuttle bay, as we are currently sitting on 80,000 credits, and this right here is our last chance to spend them. So what we'll do first is we will buy all available weapon upgrades for the N7 Crusader shotgun. This is the final weapon I will be able to show off today. I apologize if your favorites have not yet made an appearance in this series, but there are simply more weapons available than we have missions. Now, as you can see, we have plenty of funds left, so let's do the same with the M7 Lancer. This iconic weapon from Mass Effect 1 will come with us for the final leg of the journey, so we might as well make it as powerful as it can be. And finally then, we are spending our remaining funds to upgrade the N7 Typhoon. With what we have left, we will only be able to get it up to level 4, but that will still be good enough, albeit not for us, but for somebody else. We will also not embark on this final journey in Cerberus armor. Instead, which armor could be better suited than the N7 Defender? Stats-wise, actually more of a mid-range armor, but giving good bonuses to the soldier class. However, its description here could not be more fitting, as it was built to protect soldiers in long-running engagements where reinforcements might be sparse. And well, that is exactly what we have coming up. So with everything taken care of, let us head back to the CIC now and set a course for Earth. By the way, before we get into the heart of things, this has popped up in the comments from time to time and I briefly want to address it. No, for this finale we are not playing with the Earth Overhaul mod, Take Earth Back mod or Happy Ending mod. If this was a playthrough all for myself, I absolutely would install one or several of those, but for this series I want to stick to the original experience, with whatever flaws it might still have. I just quickly wanted to mention that, since we hadn't addressed it yet, and with that we are ready. As you can see, we have no other choice but to travel to Earth, so let's make one final jump and begin the grand finale. Commander, you've got a priority message from Admiral Hackett requesting to come aboard. Permission granted. Aye, Commander. Commander? Admiral? Are you ready to bring the might of the galaxy to bear on the Reapers? Yes, sir. Then let's make sure the fleets are ready. All fleets reporting in, sir. Never before have so many come together from all quarters of the galaxy. But never before have we faced an enemy such as this. The Reapers will show us no mercy. We must give them no quarter. They will terrorize our populations. We must stand fast in the face of that terror. They will advance until our last city falls. But we will not fall. We will prevail. Each of us will be defined by our actions in the coming battle. Stand fast. Stand strong. Stand together. Hack it out. Shepard, the sword fleets are ready to strike at the Reapers surrounding Earth. 
While they keep the enemy engaged, you and Hammer Ground Forces can take London. London? Why aren't we hitting the Citadel directly? Anderson can brief you on that. Admiral, how are you holding up? We are ready to end this. But as you can see, the station's closed itself since it appeared over London. Damn it. Gotta get the arms open to dock the Crucible. Exactly. But London is surrounded by Hades cannons. Hammer transports can't land while they're active. You lead a squadron of smaller shuttles. Infiltrate with a ground team to take out the cannons using heavy weapons. Hammer can land, and we'll set up a forward operations base. I still don't see how we're getting to the Citadel from London. The Reapers use this beam to transport humans, alive and dead, to the Citadel. From the FOB, Hammer will launch an all-out assault on the Citadel beam. Everyone who makes it that far will take the beam to the Citadel, then locate and activate the Citadel arm controls. Once we see those arms, Shield Fleet will escort the Crucible to the Citadel. But timing will be critical. We don't have enough firepower to keep the Crucible safe for long. Right, so first dialogue choice of the mission. This one does not give us any morality points though. And yes, it is a good plan, but it all comes down to this. Over the course of three games, this is what we have been preparing for. So I guess we have no other choice but to be ready. Nothing's ever easy. No reason it should start now. It's desperate. I don't even want to guess at our odds. But... But this is the only plan we have. If we wait, the Reapers bleed us slowly. Conventionally, we can't defeat the Reapers without the Crucible. Get the Citadel arms open. Commander, whatever the cost, we'll do the rest. Yes, sir. Good luck to all of us. Right, time for squad selection and in the last video I asked you who you would like to see for this mission. Now the mission is split into two parts, so we will be able to select our squad twice. For this first one then we'll bring one of the most popular choices in Javik, the man who has waited 50,000 years for this. And then the other choice was between two characters who have been with us from the start. Good arguments were made for both Liara and Caden, but honestly at this point I see Liara as more of a figure in the background, not to mention that Caden will be a bit more useful in what's to come. For the weapon then, we are in fact bringing the N7 Crusader shotgun. You might already see that it is a unique shotgun, firing only a single highly accurate projectile, so it behaves more like a close range sniper rifle. We will then upgrade it for damage and ammo capacity, and no, not for melee damage. Yes, we still need 12 more melee kills for the brawler achievement, but this first section of the mission is not the place to get them, so instead we're going with extra ammo, as having a few more rounds is never a bad idea. Javik then switches the particle rifle from accuracy to armor piercing. We'll be fighting a lot of close range engagements where the scope won't really be necessary. No changes are then necessary for Caden and with that we are good to go. Approaching Sol Relay Commander. We're through the relay in 30 seconds. Alliance fleet reporting. Turian fleet reporting. Asari fleet's reporting. Gorian fleets accounted for and ready. Geth fleet reporting. All fleets reporting in, Commander. Ready to engage on your command. This is it, everyone. Be ready on my signal. Fire!
my command, engage the Reaper forces. Roger that. All fighters on me. off, preparing for descent. Shepard! Good luck. You too, Joker. Advanced teams are away. Hammer's in position and waiting for you guys to clear a path. Normandy's rejoining Sword. Stay safe. I'll be back before you know it. I'll hold you to that. Normandy out. We're closing in on the LZ, Commander. How's it look? Like hell. Take a look for yourself. That can't be Earth. Got a lock. Hold on. Damn it. Status. That was the squad responsible for taking out that defense turret. Who's on it now? Nobody in the vicinity. All either deployed or shot down. Drop us off. Sir? We have to take that thing out before Hammer can land. Understood. Change of plans, people. We're gonna take out that Hades cannon. Great. How? That down shuttle would have been carrying heavy weapons. Perfect. You heard the man. Once we're clear, make your way to the crash shuttle. We'll search the wreckage for heavy weapons. I'm right with you. Now, go, go! Damn, I can't stay here, sir. Get clear. Come get us once we've taken that turret out. All right, everyone. Let's move. Right. Out of the shuttle and into the fight we go, and as you can see, the battlefield is immediately overrun with enemies. In this first fight right here, we are only facing marauders and cannibals, but we will be fighting a lot of them. So strap in, it's going to be a battle of endurance. Now, our goal is to take out the Hades cannon that you can see, hear, and feel fire in the background. Whenever it does, the camera also starts to shake violently, which makes accurately lining up shots close to impossible. Interestingly enough though, the shake does not persist through the tactical HUD, so whenever it starts you can simply open the HUD, wait for a few seconds and then exit again, although if I'm being honest I would consider that a fairly cheap strategy. Alternatively, just keep your gun down for a few seconds or use abilities, concussive shot for example will still find its target. Now 
Now at this point we're hearing that we have Brutes incoming, which should not be too challenging, but in the chaos of this fight it is actually quite easy for them to sneak up on us, so it pays off to keep your eyes open. Admittedly though, that goes for pretty much the entirety of this fight. It will take a solid few minutes until the enemy waves slow down a bit, and until then you want to stick to cover and out of the firing line, as it can be incredibly dangerous to expose yourself. And that's not necessarily because of the types of enemies we're facing, both cannibals and marauders are not the toughest units, but they are present in such a high number that they can tear you to shreds in seconds. The high presence of Marauders, by the way, is also the reason why Caden ultimately got the nod over Liara. His overload ability is just too useful against them, and we do have biotic crowd control on Javik already. Next to Javik's lift, by the way, he also has access to lift grenades, and my recommendation is to use them liberally during this fight. Their impact radius is large enough to hit multiple unshielded enemies at once, and the force of the detonation is enough to send them flying large distances, sometimes even enough to get them out of bounds and instantly kill them. At the very least, they give us a break in the enemy fire, and we will be able to replenish them shortly after we're done here. At this point, perhaps also a few quick words on the Crusader shotgun. As you should have noticed by now, it behaves a bit more like a very powerful pistol. It carries 4 rounds per magazine and they can be fired in rather quick succession, although it lacks the damage output to one-shot kill even weaker targets like cannibals. Headshots are a different matter, those are capable of one-shot killing. How reliable they are to achieve without a scope and in the chaos of this battle though, that remains to be seen. Not to mention that the camera is also still heavily shaking every few seconds. So I found the best approach here is to just double tap each enemy, first with a regular shot and then with concussive shot for the fire explosion. Neither cannibals nor unshielded marauders are strong enough to withstand that. As you can see then, the lift grenade also very good at getting us out of a dicey situation, and with that, the first big wave is finally behind us. Two guns down, but we still can't land. Now at this point, we only have one more small wave of cannibals left to deal with. They are emerging from the houses right in front of us here, which gives us a few seconds to clear out the first ones and make things a bit easier. Still, it's a good idea not to advance too quickly, neither here nor in the first section of this fight. Just because you have cleared out a few enemies does not mean that more won't spawn, and the game does not drop autosaves all that often during this first section. So if you die before triggering the first cutscene, then chances are you'll have to start all the way back from the beginning. So it helps to be patient, which is also why we are not going for the melee kills this early, at least not until the area is more or less cleared. Over on the crates here then, a resupply of ammo and grenades, and with that we are prepared for the next stage of the fight. Damn it, you've got airborne hostiles inbound. I'm gonna try to keep them off you. Careful, Cortez. Damn it, I'm hit! Cortez! I'm alright! You sure? But I won't be picking you up, I gotta land this bird quick. Get safe. Alright, so Cortez has been hit by a harvester, but we have to push forward. And while we are getting closer to the aforementioned heavy weapons, we once again have a wave of cannibals standing between us and our target. You may have also noticed that we have miraculously regained some health, and no, that is not because of me editing the footage together or something like that. The cutscene with Cortez does indeed seem to replenish your health, or at the very least a small part of it. There's the shot! Keep an eye out for the heavy weapons. Now, you may have noticed what kind of heavy weapon we are looking to grab here in a few seconds. Yes, protected by a single Ravager and more Marauders, we have an M920 Kane. In my opinion, one of the most fun heavy weapons to use back in Mass Effect 2. In this game here, then, it has been nerfed a little bit, but trust me, it's still good enough to fulfill any and all purposes. The last line of defense then consists entirely of marauders, and even though their numbers are slowly starting to thin out a bit, we will still not go aggressively for the melee kills. One wrong move and we might just be getting ourselves caught in the crossfire, so we need to be a bit more selective about our targets. Don't worry though, we are shortly going for one more, bringing us up to 90 in total. The remaining 10 can then be grabbed in the second half of the mission. For that second half, we will then also switch back to the Lancer Assault Rifle. The fighting will just be a little bit more difficult during the later stages of this mission, so unfortunately we can't risk running any further experiments. Once the last Marauder is defeated, we can then take note of the fact that we have some Medigel on the ground and not one but two canes to grab. But for now, let's help ourselves to just the one and do what we came here for. That's it! Fire that thing right down its throat! Prepare for landing. 
Anybody, come in. We need extraction. Right, looks like we'll have to wait a bit for that extraction to arrive. A Banshee, however, is unfortunately much quicker on the scene. Thankfully, though, we grab that second cane and don't need to worry about that. This is Commander Shepard. Any Alliance personnel in the vicinity? Okay, so we are still not getting anything on the comms, and now the place is slowly but steadily starting to swarm with cannibals. Now, as you can see, it's not too difficult to keep them away. At the moment, the only thing limiting us from keeping this up indefinitely might be ammunition, but still, we obviously have much bigger things to worry about, and should therefore get out of here as soon as we can. Nonetheless, until an opportunity presents itself, we'll have to keep fighting. The occasional lift grenade can give us some breathing room if we need it, but again, as long as we stick to cover, this shouldn't be too tricky. By the way, you can also very neatly see that Reaper beam in the distance. And yes, that is what we will eventually need to reach to get someone up onto the Citadel. As you can see though, we are still a good distance away from it. On the bright side though, it looks like the extraction team has finally arrived. Get us out of here, Corporal. You okay? I'm alive. That you are, Commander. Anderson. I knew you wouldn't let me down, Shepard. It's good to see you. And you're a sight for sore eyes. How we looking? Now that the heavy air defenses are dealt with, Hammer can land. And not a moment too soon. What's left of the Resistance is holding a forward operating base. But the Reapers are countering already. Once we regroup, it's going to be up to Hammer to take up the fight. It must have been brutal here, cut off from the rest of the Alliance. It's been touch and go from day one. But once we figured out the Reapers were focusing on the major centers, it became easier to avoid direct contact. Until London. Yeah. We held back as long as we could, sending in recon teams. Lost a lot of good men planning this attack. But with soldiers like Major Coates, and knowing you'd bring us help, we held on. Right, after leaving him back on Earth in the first episode, we are now meeting back up with Anderson. And after grabbing five Paragon points with the interrupt earlier, let's grab two more here. Without you and your resistance, we'd be dead in the water. Yeah, the Admiral's being modest. He's the reason any of us are still alive. Let's not start handing out medals just yet. This fight's just getting started, and Hammer better be ready for it. Two more Paragon points can then be obtained by expressing trust in everyone's abilities, and to be honest, it's not like we really have any other choice. They didn't start out together, but they're ready to stand side by side and win this war. Good. That's what it's gonna take. We'll get it done, Anderson. I was born in London. Really? The entire galaxy united. Too bad it took the Reapers to bring us together. The Shepherds, the one who united them. That's exactly what I meant. I know you didn't like leaving, Shepard. But nobody could have accomplished what you've done. It's good to be back home. There's the FOB. Looks good. Give Hammer the all clear.
Admiral, we've set up a command center in the building over there. Looks like we've still got groups coming in. Yes, sir, but not as many as we'd hoped. Hmm. Come see me when you're ready, Shepard. Will do. He's correct. I expected more of Hama would be here by now. A lot of them won't be making it. You two go on ahead. I'll catch up. The fighting here has been some of the worst on the planet. It looks bad, but there's still hope. And you're here. It'll do the troops good to see you. Bolster their resolve. And yes, considering what we have accomplished over the course of three games, he is probably right. But for two more Paragon points, we can have him stroke our ego a bit more. I'm just a soldier like them. You might see yourself like that, but they don't. Like it or not, Commander, you're a hero to these men and women. Don't discount the effect that can have on them. I better go meet up with my battalion. I'll see you at the command center. Alright, here we are then in the forward operating base, a short breather section after the first bit of fighting, but trust me, we are not done with the action, not by a long shot. Still, for the time being, it looks like our position is secure. For some reason, we are also carrying the cane around with us, but that one will be gone after the first conversation, which we can now have as we run into James. Hey, Commander. What? No loco? <laughs> yeah, sorry. You okay? I don't know what I thought I'd feel coming back to Earth. I was ready to fight. Ready to die if I had to. But seeing everything like this... Now, we will not get any morality points out of this or any other of the conversations in the FOB. Still, we will be sticking to the Paragon path for most of them, so let's show ourselves optimistic. I know it's hard to see, but this is only temporary. But first we need to win this thing. Stay focused. Don't let them take your will to fight. I know, I know. You're right. So, I guess this is it, no? One more push, one last fight. Not necessarily our last. It's been an honor serving with you, Shepard. And yes, this might very well be our last chance to have a conversation with James, so let's end it on a high note and tell him that the feelings be mutual. You're a good man, and a terrific soldier. Thanks. Whatever happens out there today, I know you'll make me proud. That means a lot to me, sir. Hey, good luck out there, loco. Right, so this is only the first of several squad member conversations we can have in the camp. Before we move on to the next one, though, we can listen to some radio chatter. And unfortunately, it's none of the good kind. Be advised, we got units Echo Bravo and Echo Charlie have checked in. What did they find? Reports indicate one of your parts of base is in no man's land. Enemy instinction has been 100%. They said one of the big reapers swept through the area. Did Echo Team have a recommendation? Affirmative. Advise delaying next wave of hammer. Damn. We'll get murdered out there. We don't have a choice. Negative on that delay. We'll advise command of the situation, but hammer proceeds as planned. Over. Acknowledged. We have word from the other outposts. Airfield reports 80% KIA. Countdown 75% KIA. Red Bridge 92% KIA. Kensington. 100% KIA. Wait. Repeat your last. Say again. Kensington reports 100% killed in action. All of them? About transmission SOS reported they were being overrun by enemy forces. No word since. All personnel presumed dead. Shit. Thompson and Dewhurst were posted there. Maybe they got out. We don't know for sure. We'll advise if more intel becomes available. Logistics at all overland routes to their position are blocked by enemy forces. Negative 
Yes, despite the temporary peace and quiet, this here a very good reminder that there's still a war going on, and that at least so far it looks like the Reapers are winning. Nonetheless, I think we have earned ourselves the right to take this moment, so let's meet with Caden next, who's been with us all the way since Mass Effect 1. Hey Caden. Hey Shepard. You ready? Absolutely. For anything. Bring it on. And Biotics Division? Your students? <laughs> More than ready. Eager. That's youth for you. Guess we're old soldiers, eh, Shepard? Yeah. I guess we are. We know the score. We know this is goodbye. And, well, considering the odds, he is probably right. But, as usual, we have to be the leader in this. So let's do our best to keep morale up. We're gonna win this thing. Don't get me wrong. I'm gonna fight like hell to see you on the other side. But, listen. I... There's... Things I want to say. And looking back... I have a few regrets, but not many. That's pretty damn amazing, right? Messed up kid that I was... Never would have dreamed of the life I've had. And I owe a lot of that to you, you know? It's been quite a ride. It sure has. But how are you doing? Scared? And let's be honest, Shepard would be an absolute psychopath not to be scared in this situation. So yes, absolutely, we are going with the option at the top. Damn straight I'm scared. But that fear's gonna keep me alive long enough to strike these bastards right through the heart. Yeah, exactly. So, take care, Major. You too, Commander. Well... I should find the rest of my squad. Yeah. You know, I've never been to London. <laughs> now, moving on, we quickly want to explore the section behind the vehicles over here. No, unfortunately, we will not be able to drive a Mako ourselves, although upon finding this data pad here, we learned that it might be better that way, as it looks like we have reached the point where they are used purely as decoys, manned by volunteers only, and used purely to buy our forces some time. And as grim as it might be, we are now using up more of that time, as in the building right behind Caden we will find a communications tech who will allow us to contact some of the people who are not currently present in the camp itself. Yes, Commander. Is there someone you'd like to reach? And yes indeed, we can now get a few short lines out of pretty much every former squad member who's still alive, and that's pretty much everyone, except for Ashley, Morden, Legion and Thane. So, let's make a few calls and see what they have to say. Steve Cortez. Certainly. I'll connect you now. Commander, you made it. Glad I can say the same about you, Cortez. I've come too far to lose my pilot now. I apologize for that. Things got too hot. Thought maybe I could do another run and head back around. Well, not one of my finer moments. If I'd been flying my old trident, things might have been different. What matters is we took out that AA gun. Absolutely. And the Reapers are next. That's the idea. It'll happen. I'm just glad I could play a part. And Commander, thanks for making me believe again. If you hadn't... It helps to have reason to live again. Stay sharp, Cortez. Yes, sir. Is there someone else I can connect you to? Zaid Masani. Certainly. I'll connect you now. Almost thought you weren't gonna make it, Shepard. Glad I was wrong. You doing okay, Zaid? Yeah, yeah. Hope you've got one hell of a speech to get everyone moving. Looks like we might need it. Never seen anything like this. We don't stop it now. It gets worse. No kidding. 
just doesn't feel like a real ground war when your opponents are taller than goddamn skyscrapers. Still, no use talking about it. Ready to go when you are. Let's cut the bastards. Is there someone else I can connect you to? Jack. Certainly. I'll connect you now. Shepard? Shepard, is that you? Jack, how are you guys? Good so far. We're a ways south of your position. We saved some resistance fighters with barrier support. Bring a bit more firepower your way. I'll see you on the other side. I won't let you down, Shepard. Go kick some ass. You too. Is there someone else I can connect you to? Kasumi Goto. Certainly. I'll connect you now. Hey, Shep. You ready down there? Depends on whether you got the crucible good to go. Oh, it's ready. No idea what it'll do exactly, but it's gonna be big. Good luck, Shepard. If you live through it, drinks are on me. Is there someone else I can connect you to? Samara. Certainly. I'll connect you now. I wondered if I'd see you again, Samara. It's past time I joined your battle. You helped me a great deal in the monastery, Shepard. Thank you for returning the favor. Only your actions will be remembered. May you choose them well. Farewell. Is there someone else I can connect you to? Grunt. Certainly. I'll connect you now. About time you got here, Shepard. Didn't want to win this thing all by myself. Good to see you back in action, Grunt. Wouldn't miss it. Shepard. Yeah? Thanks for getting me out of that tank. Sure, Grunt. It's been an honor. Same here, Shepard. Okay, Grunt out. Is there someone else I can connect you to? Jacob Taylor. Certainly. I'll connect you now. Shepard, that you? Jacob, holding up? <laughs> Kicking ass, more like. My kill count's through the roof. We'll meet and compare notches when this is over. You got it. There's this, uh, great little bar in Rio we have to check out. I'm holding you to that. Give him hell, Jacob. Yes, sir. Shepard out. Is there someone else I can connect you to? Miranda Lawson. Certainly. I'll connect you now. Commander. Hope you don't mind me crashing this little party of yours. Not at all. Feeling better? Much. I got a few sideways looks from Alliance Brass when I offered to help. They can't be choosy at this point. I'm glad you made it. Shepard. I, I wanted to say goodbye. Goodbye? If we both come back from this at all, everything will be different. Sure, everything will change. But on our terms, we've been running until now, Miranda. It has to stop. I understand. This isn't goodbye. You have to believe we're not done yet. Listening to you, I can believe it. <sighs> Good. And Miranda? Yes? Be careful. I promise. And you too, Shepard. Is there someone else I can connect you to? I'm done. Yes, sir. Right. No dialogue choices, no reputation points for completing these conversations. And yes, I would agree that some of these characters might have deserved a bigger send-off. This is something that the mods I mentioned at the beginning of the video attempt to fix, but we will have to live with these slightly shorter conversations. In my opinion, the most important thing is that we just talk to everyone before we continue. I want you to coordinate with the Alliance. Make sure we iron out these logistical problems. Yes, sir. The Krogan don't want to share supplies, though. That's just Rex playing hard to get. Tell him I've got a crate of Denorian beer I'd be happy to barter with. <laughs> and that ought to get his attention. It's a shame to see another planet get hit like this. It'll be the last one if I have anything to say about it. This nightmare finally ends today. You really 
think the Reapers can be defeated? I know they can. That whole Sovereign business a few years ago, he was the first to die. Now all his friends will too. Right, looks like we've run into Garrus, fan favorite and with us from day one. Time to have one last conversation. Shepard. So I guess this is... Just like old times? Huh. Hmm. Might be the last chance we get to say that. Think we're gonna lose? No, I think we're about to kick the Reapers back into whatever black hole they crawled out of. Then we're going to retire somewhere warm and tropical and live off the royalties from the vids. And yes, I do agree that after three games worth of saving the world, retirement is very much deserved. Not to mention that Garrus also pulled double duty as Archangel in between. I'll meet you there. I think my days of saving the galaxy are over when this is done. Be sure to leave room for all the autographs. <laughs> Just need to beat the Reapers to get there. James told me there's an old saying here on Earth. May you be in heaven half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. Not sure if Torian heaven is the same as yours, but if this thing goes sideways and we both end up there, meet me at the bar. I'm buying. And again, I think we should do our best to counter the somewhat grim outlook that our squad members might have. Not that the attitude wouldn't be understandable, but still. We're a team, Garrus. There's no Shepard without Vicarian, so you better remember to duck. Sorry, Turians don't know how, but I'll improvise. And Shepard, forgive the insubordination, but this old friend has an order for you. Go out there and give them hell. You were born to do this. Goodbye, Garrus. And if I'm up there in that bar and you're not, I'll be looking down. I'll always have your back. Now, we have also just bypassed Primark Victus, whose presence here is certainly curious, so let's get a few lines out of him as well. Primark Victus, I didn't realize you were here. I wanted to return the favor in person. Though I'm sorry to see your world. Looks as bad as ours. I'm surprised you're not back on Palapin. This war will be won or lost today, here, on Earth, not Palavan. Everything comes down to this moment, and history will record that the Turian hierarchy stood among the brave. How are things back on Palavan? Erdnot Rex was true to his word. The Krogan put up a magnificent fight, fearless to the last soldier. They bought us time to evacuate civilians. Yet even then, the Reapers were still too much. The only hope from my world now is victory here on Earth. I'm glad we got this chance to speak. Good luck, Commander. Right, and I think we could use that. But for now, let's keep going through the door and into the next area. Okay, something a little different in between. Just so we don't get bored of all the conversations, we can now shoot some husks and the occasional cannibal too. As far as I'm aware, you cannot actually fail this section, even if you don't manage to kill a single enemy. The only thing that slightly changes depending on how well we did is the conversation we'll have afterwards. But apart from that, after about 30 seconds or so, the sequence will always come to the same end. I also highly recommend aiming down the sides, or in this case just zooming in a bit. The gun's bright muzzle flash can make it a bit difficult to aim, and especially the husks are moving at a decent pace, so you don't want to waste more shots on them than necessary. Still, with this being a completionist playthrough and all, let us aim for the best possible performance, which is really not that hard to achieve. Alright, that is this fight dealt with as well, and speaking of achievements, I'm actually going to leave a pinned comment below this video explaining some of the achievements we did not obtain during this playthrough. Don't worry though, everything that can be unlocked in a single playthrough will be unlocked. There's just a few special cases that for example require multiple playthroughs, and I don't want to distract from the video by talking about them here. How are the casualties? 
they haven't brought in many more wounded. That's something. How are you holding up, Liara? This is it, isn't it? Yeah. This is it. I don't know what to say. I just know I'll have a clever line five minutes from now. I do have one thing for you, Shepard. A gift. It'll only take a moment, if you want it. What kind of gift? Do you remember when I first joined my consciousness to yours? I can show you some of my own memories. Asari exchange them sometimes, with their friends, or the people they respect. It can also be a way to say farewell. By the way, the first few lines of this conversation change depending on how well we did in the shooting section. This dialogue choice here, meanwhile, always an easy choice, of course we'll accept to get as much out of the conversation as we can. I'd be honored. Close your eyes. Thank you. For everything. Let's do what needs to be done, Shepard. Right, so one of the rare moments in this game where we see that Liara and Shepard still share a close bond. After all, unless she is your love interest, in Mass Effect 3 Liara is usually pretty quiet. Moving on then, we can find some Medigel and another radio conversation to listen into. What's his condition? Okay, now, now try to stay calm. I'm just a civilian. We're out of Medigel, and your surgeon got killed by a Reaper. I don't know how to do this. I'll talk you through it. You're his only hope right now. The most important thing is to stop the bleeding. How? Do you have any towels or bandages? No, nothing. We're sitting under a bombed out highway. Uh, then use your shirt. Tear off one of your sleeves and... You need to tear off your sleeve into strips. You're going to make a tourniquet. All right. Hold on. Okay, I did it. Now wrap that just above his knee to cut off the blood flow. Tie it off in a knot. I'm trying. Okay. Around his knee. No, I can't get it tight enough. There's so much blood. Try it again. Pull tighter. What's his condition? It looks like he passed out. But he's still breathing. I stay with him. If the bleeding starts again, let me know. You're going to make it. Right. Okay. Thank you. But I don't think we'll survive another night of this. Yeah, and as if that wasn't awful enough, don't worry, it gets worse. And by that I do not only mean the data pad around the corner here, which very clearly details a person's struggle against being indoctrinated, and against going into that place where the others went and get turned into those things. And again, that is far from the worst of it, because the conversation we just listened to unfortunately has a second half. Doctor? Yes, I'm here. The corporal stopped breathing. Do you feel a pulse? No. Gone. You did everything you could. We'll get you out of there soon. I don't think so. One of the big reapers is coming our way. Well, then run, get out of there. That doesn't work. They always catch you, and then they turn you into those things. You have to try. Go! No. I've got the corporal's gun here. I'm going to end it before they find me. End it? 
You mean... No, 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 don't! Goodbye, Doctor. Wait, no! Are you still there? Hello? Are you there? Damn it. Yes, one has to admit, this mission absolutely excels at portraying the horrors of war. And it somehow makes it even worse that we are in the middle of it all, taking our sweet time talking to everyone. But then again, this might very well be the last chance we get. When the Rachni laid waste to the galaxy 2,000 years ago, when all seemed lost and the end was near, one word delivered the killer blow. One word beat the monsters back to the abyss. And one word brought death to an enemy none dared fight. That word was Krogan! And today, the Krogan rise again. Today, we forge a new path and join the galaxy as allies in victory. Today, we win our future! This isn't Solarian boot camp. I want to be prepped and ready in five. Get to it! Suck it up, princesses! Somebody go see if the Quarians have anything to eat. All that Turian food gave me the runs. We may have cured the Geneface, Don Rock, but if you don't step to it, you're not having any kids! Shepard, you did it. No matter what else happens today, you did what no one else could. You united a galaxy. That's a victory right there. And don't worry, I know why you're going to win. Because you brought the Krogan. Oh, and Bakara sends her regards. She's already pregnant. There are benefits to being a clan leader. But she keeps insisting we name the first one Morden. Anyway, let's get to it. I meant to tell you, Shepard. Earth reminds me of home. Guess you'll be needing a new planet too. That's okay. Duchanka's got room to spare, and a guard dog named Kalros. We're ready, Shepard. Say the word. Right, only a few words from Rex, who's rallying his troops, but we also have our Prothean friend over here, who most likely will have a bit more to say. Commander. Was it this bad in your time? Worse. I have been listening to the Krogan speak to his men. In our cycle, the races never came together. There was no rallying cry. I envy you. Really? There's not much left out there. The future is still out there. It is something my people could never say. There will be a tomorrow. Only if we win today. No one else has ever made it this far. And yes indeed, if we're talking about people who've made it far, then Javik is at the top of the list. After all, he is the only one alive who now gets his second chance to defeat the Reapers. You came a long way, Javik. Further than anyone else here. And I look forward to fulfilling my mission. But you are now the avatar of this cycle. The exemplar of victory. Not just for humanity, or Turians, or Protheans, but for all life. Every soul that has ever existed is watching this moment. <laughs> well, no pressure when you put it that way. Do not waver. Victory is never won without difficult choices. And indeed, over the course of all three games, we've had our fair share of those, so I'd have to imagine that Shepard has at least somewhat gotten used to it by now. I know. I've had to make a lot of those. There may be more. But I know you will see this through for all of us, no matter the cost. If we actually pull this off, what'll you do afterwards? Since my birth, life's only pursuit has been war. I look forward to seeing what peace looks like. It's a big galaxy. Perhaps I will write a book with the Asar... with Dr. Tesoni. She suggests... journeys with the Prothean. You do that? I will need a job. There will be no Reapers left to kill. Thank you, Commander, for letting the last voice of the Protheans speak. It has been a privilege. Right, and with that we are ready to enter the command center. This is where we are supposed to talk to Anderson, but we also haven't talked to two other squad members yet. So, unsurprisingly, we'll find Edie and Tali in here too. What about this zone? 
We could circle around and flood it with reinforcements. Not likely. I spent three days in that sector, trapped inside Big Ben, sniping anything that moved. It's a bloody death trap. Name me one place in this city that isn't. I don't know, Admiral. Our Thanix missiles pack a punch, but that's against conventional targets. A Reaper is a whole other matter. We have to make do with what we've got, Major. Get their crews prepped and moving. Yes, sir. Thanix missile crews report ready for action, sir. Target packages have been uploaded. Warhead payloads confirmed. What's the armor like on those things? Not good enough. Small arms fire isn't a problem, but anything bigger than that. The crews are vulnerable, Admiral. Understood. Right, looks like the situation is getting worse by the minute, so let's not waste any more time and complete the last few conversations as well now. And of course, we are saving Tali for last, so let's begin with Edie. Shepard, I have a question. Is it a big or small one? It is important. Its relevance would be diminished at any other time. Ask away. In this battle, the Reapers have no reason not to use their full capabilities to destroy us. Their forces are in entrenched positions. They have superior firepower and outnumber our forces. My question is, what makes you think we can reach the Conduit at all? And no, I don't think that I don't fail twice would be a convincing argument. Instead, let's go with the answer that has actually proven to be true time and time again. The Reapers have the Citadel. They think they've won, and that's the best time to hit them. If they have spies or other intelligence, we could lose the element of surprise. In such a case, we will likely lose. Are you afraid? Our probability for success is greater than any other plan presented to date. That's not what I asked. Are you afraid? I do not understand the purpose of the question. There's no room for doubt anymore, Edie. You understand what we have to do, or you don't. I am clear on what we must accomplish, Shepard. The Reapers have destroyed thousands of civilizations. But they have never destroyed ours, nor will they. Well, sounds very much like Edie is on the same page as Shepard. And indeed, her being all in is exactly what we want to hear. It definitely shows nicely what a journey she has made. Couldn't have put it better myself. Time to move out. Shepard, there is something I want you to know. The elusive man ordered my creation years ago. Jeff was the one who allowed me to think for myself. But only now do I feel alive. That is your influence. Thanks, Edie. Alright, and with that we are now down to Tali, another person who has been with us since the very beginning, and in this case, the person that Shepard has grown closest to, more than enough reason to have one last conversation. Almost time for the final push. Are you okay? I thought I'd be asking you that question. Shepard, I backed you when I was just a kid on her pilgrimage. I backed you when the Normandy was a Cerberus ship. Wherever you go, I'm with you. And you haven't answered my question. Are you okay? And honestly, at this point in the trilogy, Shepard is absolutely not okay. Not to mention that going with the dialogue option at the top here unlocks a beautiful piece of dialogue that I do not want you guys to miss. You remember how you felt when you landed on Rannoch? Now imagine it's not a story passed down by your people. Imagine you were there just a few months ago. And now you're seeing it like this. We need to put it right. We will. Do you remember what we said on Rannoch? Just before you took down that Reaper? And, well, it has been a few episodes, but perhaps you remember it too. If you don't, then, well, Shepard is kind enough here to remind us of exactly what was said. You said, I love you. And you said, Kila Salai. I want more time. I know. Whatever happens. I know. Alright, and there we are. We have now talked to every single available squad member, and the only way to continue is to talk to Anderson himself and to begin the final stage of this mission. So, let's do exactly that and begin the second hour of this grand finale. Commander? Admiral? Just going over the sit rip. How's it look? Barely 50% of Hammer has reported in. 
Can we count on more making it? There's some stragglers still en route. But the bulk of hammer that's still intact has arrived. We're as ready as we're likely to get. This right here, then, the final, final point of no return. Not that there really is anything we could return to, but do make sure you have not missed any conversations at this point. We haven't, so let's start the attack, and with that, the beginning of the end. Every minute wasted here, the Reapers gather strength. Exactly my thoughts. Battalion leaders, report to HQ. We fought hard to get here, but now the toughest part of our mission begins. We've got to drive right through the heart of Reaper-controlled territory, break past their defenses, and get to that beam. What kind of defenses? The entire area is crawling with Reaper forces. But our biggest concern is the Destroyer, protecting the beam itself. Can we bring in air support to deal with it? Negative. Some kind of interference. We'll have to take it out from the ground. Now they've cut a swath of no-man's land through the city. We'll have to cross that first. There'll be some limited shelter on the other side, but expect heavy ground resistance. We need to get our tanks to here, if we get close enough. We've got a shot at taking that thing out. How much of a shot? They know we're coming. This will be a one-way trip for many of us, but there can be no retreat, no stepping back. We move forward at all costs, understood? Who yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Johnson, Coates, you two will coordinate the artillery units. Shepard, support the tanks the best you can, but stay alive. I need you for the final push to the beam. I'll give you a minute with your squad. Pick your team well. Alright, here we are. Our entire squad is assembled and we have to address them one last time. Throughout this short speech we will be presented with several dialogue choices and we will be picking the Paragon option every single time, addressing our team as loyal friends fighting for the survival of the entire galaxy, and not just as soldiers completing one final big mission. This war has brought us pain and suffering and loss. But it's also brought us together. As soldiers, allies, friends. This bond that ties us together is something the Reapers will never understand. It's more powerful than any weapon, stronger than any ship. It can't be taken or destroyed. The next few hours will decide the fate of everyone in the galaxy. Every mother, every son, every unborn child. They're trusting you, depending on you to win them their future. A future free from the threat of the Reapers. But take heart, look around you. You're not in this fight alone. We face our enemy together, and together we will defeat them. Right, time to select our squad for the second half of the mission. And compared to the first part, this is an easy choice. We are going with Garrus and Tali. Tali because she is our love interest, and Garrus, well, let me just say he has not unleashed his full potential yet. However, that is about to change as we now select our weapons. For Shepard, as advertised, the Mark V M7 Lancer. Lightweight, fairly powerful and without the need to reload. The scope meanwhile has to go in favor of more damage. And for Garrus then it is time to equip the N7 Typhoon. It might not look like much here, very heavy, solid damage but also not very accurate. But well, Garrus does bring a certain set of skills with him. Skills that make him an absolute monster with this weapon in his hands.
Alright then, back into the fight we go, this time backed up by Tali and Garrus, and this time also with a much higher focus on getting melee kills. Ten more we still need for the Brawler achievement, and especially at the beginning of the second half of the mission, the enemy groups tend to be a bit smaller, and that makes grabbing melee kills a bit easier. Case in point, the first group has been quickly defeated and we have grabbed ourselves two more melee kills, eight more to go and another chance will present itself shortly. Not this one though, the ambush here is so small that it's hardly worth it, but as you might be able to see in the background, the beam is still a good distance away, so we will meet our fair share of enemies until we get there. And that goes for us as well, as for the first time in this mission things get a bit more dicey. A harvester has just arrived on the scene, but we have some firepower of our own. The Mako is helping out a bit too, and as a result the harvester goes down in record time. Unfortunately though, you can hear it, it is not the only threat in this fight. A banshee is also present, but perhaps we can use it to demonstrate some of Garrus's new firepower. Obviously we need to get rid of its shields first, but since all three members of our squad have shield stripping abilities, that is not much of a problem, and then we can stand back and watch and see what Garrus can do. Or what he cannot do, as he apparently gets caught in the Banshee's warp, and a few seconds later he does in fact go down entirely. Well, looks like it's up to us to solve this after all, but with the Banshee distracted and most other enemies still caught behind the vehicle, that is thankfully not too difficult to achieve. Speaking of achievements once more, one achievement we did actually unlock a long time ago and I completely forgot to mention it is the Shield Breaker achievement. You unlock that for overloading the shields of 100 enemies and I can confidently say that we have fulfilled that requirement multiple times over. I actually sat down to recount this over the weekend which was quite difficult but we should have unlocked this at around episode 16 or 17 so let's quickly pop it right here so that we have it out of the way. By the way, in the original Mass Effect 3, the Shield Break achievement was still called Overload Specialist. The requirements, however, were exactly the same. In the meantime, we have made it into the next section of the fight. This time we are fighting husks and in a few seconds also a pair of brutes. Nothing that we can't handle and perhaps we might even get ourselves another melee kill at the end of it. Thanks to Garrus's help, the brutes then also go down extremely quickly and that leaves a lone husk the perfect target for melee kill number 95. Now correct me if I'm wrong here, as you know I'm not a native English speaker, but I believe it should be routed instead of rooted, just something I noticed while editing the footage, maybe someone can enlighten me in the comments. In the meantime we are doing our best to wipe out another small reaper hideout. Initially the ravager that is present in this room is focused on the street below, which does make things a bit easier, but it is still a good idea not to rush in blindly. With a bit of luck, and that mostly means that Garrus does not kill your enemies too quickly, another melee kill should also be achievable. And this is where the Lancer offers a lovely advantage, as unlike the shotgun from earlier, its damage per shot is much lower, Thanks. We're moving again. which means it is much easier to dish out a controlled amount of damage and to get the enemy health bar just right and into melee kill territory. And with that, our convoy is moving again and we have a computer to examine. And this one is unfortunately yet another heartbreaking message. Very likely the last bit of communication between this person and their parents. Only one more reason for us to put an end to all of this. As we have a brief second then to catch our breath, we can make use of two medkits in the area and then proceed through the door into the next area, or rather clear the way first. This one here actually a lovely callback to the very first episode where we encountered another husk trapped in a door in a very similar fashion. Either way, this one here now gives us melee kill number 97, and with that we're through. Alright people, eyes peeled. The buildings will give us some cover, but it gives them a place to hide. Roger that. Right, so back down to the streets we go and immediately we are meeting more enemies. Admittedly, the first three marauders are quickly defeated, but there are more waiting in the back, including a very well-positioned Ravager. Yeah. 
and in my opinion it is absolutely vital to take out this Ravager as soon as you spot it. The high ground gives it an excellent overview of the battlefield, and in my opinion there is no need to give it that advantage any longer than necessary. Looping around the truck then gives us a slightly better firing angle at the enemies dropping in from above. After defeating the initial enemy presence that also includes a brute, we have more cannibals and marauders, and once they are dealt with, the path into the building here is clear. Inside we are obviously running into even more enemies, but this time there is plenty of cover available, which actually makes this section the best suited one for grabbing the three remaining melee kills, so let's go to work and see what we can do. To be honest, I'm actually very intrigued by a melee-only playthrough, especially the Infiltrator and Vanguard classes can dish out absolutely enormous amounts of melee damage, and who knows, maybe I'll try that as a one-off once this series is over. Now at this point we are only one melee kill away from number 100 and unlocking the Brawler achievement. I have to admit I made that one a bit more difficult than what was necessary, but as you can see with the right setup and a level 60 character the fighting itself in this mission is not overly challenging, and perhaps it does make for an interesting side quest for you guys too. The Brawler achievement then by the way, the last achievement left to unlock that is not related to the game's storyline. Everything else will pop automatically as soon as we reach certain points in this final mission, and as always we are aiming to unlock the achievements available in the Legendary Edition, as well as the few additional ones that were present in the original game. I think I have mentioned this before, some of them are no longer present in the Legendary Edition. Overall, the original Mass Effect 3 had a grand total of 68 achievements, including all DLC. The Legendary Edition meanwhile only has 38, as well as a handful of achievements that span all three games, but still there is significantly less to do in the Legendary Edition if you're going for a completionist playthrough. Speaking of which, with the last enemy now battered into submission, the Brawler achievement finally unlocks, and we can rely on pure firepower for the rest of the way. A destroyer spotted us. We're prepping Phanix missiles. Hold your fire. Don't do anything but piss it off. Out of that, the women have no choice. Right, so there is a bit of a situation developing with that destroyer. Let's keep an eye and an ear on that. Right, so it looks like something is interrupting the missile's guidance systems, and this certainly does not bode well for our chances of ever reaching the beam, because from what it sounds like, the destroyer is currently protecting it. Still, nothing we can do at the moment but to press onwards, another room full of marauders and cannibals is quickly cleared out, and once the last of the inhabitants is dealt with, the path into the next area is clear. In the next area then, first things first, so let's refill our medigel with the station on the wall here. Now at this point it is theorized that the beam itself is interrupting the missile guidance systems, which could be a problem as we cannot simply shut that off, and even if we could, we need it to get up to the citadel, so we might be stuck in a bit of a conundrum here. Let's see how the situation unfolds and what we might be able to do to solve it. And we've got two more brutes incoming, nothing too challenging if we just take a few steps back. Okay, sounds very much like the entire operation is in danger, so we might want to be quick about helping out. Before we do though, let's read one more data pad. And once again it is unnerving, as the Reapers seem to be targeting shelters, evacuation shuttles, emergency services and power centers. In other words, they are specifically targeting people and not infrastructure, but I guess that is what they came here to do, to eradicate all advanced life forms in the galaxy.
fire support. We need reinforcements on the... Okay, so on the bright side it looks like the battery of Thanix missiles is still standing. However, unfortunately, the people protecting it are not. And so it is now once again up to us to clear out the advancing cannibals and marauders. Don't worry though, the missile battery cannot actually be destroyed. So there is nothing with a health bar that we actually need to protect. Instead, we just need to defeat the enemies and not die ourselves, which, considering what we're going up against, should very much be doable. Whether or not we will eventually have more luck with the missiles ourselves, however, that is an entirely different matter. There's the artillery. But the company's been wiped out! Commander, do you read me? Major, what's the situation? The beam's interfering with missile guidance. We can hit the destroyer, but we'll never make the precision strike we need to take it out. Damn it! Edie, can you read me? Yes, Commander. Any suggestions? I may be able to use the Normandy systems to enhance the missile's targeting capabilities. Excellent. I'll need you to open a link to the Normandy from the missile systems. On it! That's it. I'll let you know when I've adapted the targeting systems. Sounds like good news, Commander. We'll see. Hammer, this is Admiral Anderson. The Reaper ground forces are making a push. Hold your ground. Protect those tanks until we can get a shot. You heard it, people. Get ready. There they are! Okay, so while Edie is reprogramming the targeting system, we need to hold our position for a little while longer. And by now, it also looks like the Reapers have caught wind of what we're doing here. As you can see, they are already sending in reinforcements. Now, as you can see, these reinforcements are appearing rather far away, and we could obviously move over there to engage them a bit more closely, considering that we are once again dealing with only cannibals and marauders that wouldn't be too risky. There is actually another building over on the left side on the opposite end of the street where we could hide in as well. But let's just say that this right here won't be the last enemy wave we're facing. And in my opinion, our current position is the better one for what comes afterwards. It actually also includes a medkit on the shelves. Although, as you can see, we do want to keep an eye out for enemies coming in from the back. Their appearance does give us the opportunity to grab one more melee kill. But you definitely don't want to get caught between two groups in this fight. It looks, though, as if we have taken out all enemy resistance, at least for the time being. Commander, we tried to hold them off, but they destroyed our trucks, overwhelmed our position. Your left flank is gone. They're headed your way. Sorry, sir. Hang in there, soldier. Heads up. We've got more incoming. Watch our left flank. All right, and here they are already. Shortly after being warned about an attack on our left flank, the first enemies appear. And especially that spawn point of the marauders up in the building over there. That is why I think this right here is the perfect spot to hunker down and take them on. Yes, in this position we are very close to the action, but considering that we are once again fighting mostly marauders and cannibals, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I say mostly because, as you can see, we now also have a Banshee join the fight, and a second one is actually scheduled to appear a few moments later, which means it is a good idea to take this first one out as quickly as possible. By the way, as far as I'm aware, there is actually no way for us to get onto the high ground that our enemies are currently occupying. The only way to reliably negate their high ground advantage would therefore be to just camp out far away. But again, I don't really think that's necessary, and our current position actually also has a very good emergency option available for us. It looks like we will thankfully not need it during this stage of the fight, but trust me, we will make use of it eventually. In the meantime, the second Banshee has now also arrived on the scene. After taking out the first, with little trouble, the same should apply here, and so I once again decided to give Garrus a chance to shine. As you can see though, unfortunately, whenever I decide to do that, Garrus rewards me by going down pretty much instantly. This time though, we are using some Medigel. Don't worry, we will find more soon. That screech you might have been able to hear in the background then, not a sign of a third Banshee. As a matter of fact, we are almost done with this group here. As it stands, we are down to the last few stragglers. Once those are down, we will then make a beeline for the building on the opposite end of the street. We won't find much in there, except for a lone medical station to replenish our supplies. Commander, I have reprogrammed targeting. Missiles are ready for launch. Got it. You heard it. Back to the truck, people. All right, so back to the truck we go. Looks like we are ready to launch those missiles after all. Let's hope that after Edie took care of the problem, we have more luck with the targeting system. Missile guidance enhanced. Firing. Did it hit? 
What happened? The Reaper is still too close to the beam. We're down to two missiles. And we haven't even scratched it. You will need to allow the Reaper to move out of the beam's influence. And closer to us. Commander, hammer is being overrun at every turn. Reaper ground forces are converging on your location. We're fighting our way to you. Hold on, Commander. Hold on. Kila, how can there be more of them? Hold on, everyone. We can do this. We're about to find out. Here they come. And here they come indeed, and for a change we are not fighting cannibals and marauders. Instead, it's brutes, and not just the usual pair of them. No, in total we will need to defeat six of them. Now, thankfully, those six do arrive in pairs of two and usually come from different directions, so for the most part we will not be fighting them all at once, but we will still need to be quick about taking them out, otherwise we will undoubtedly get swamped. And another bright spot, we have Garrus with us, who should have no trouble dealing with two to three brutes all by himself, and I think at this point I should probably also go into a bit more detail about what exactly makes him so powerful. A lot of you have most likely seen the Garrus Ascends to Godhood video, which shows him absolutely shredding brutes, banshees and even harvesters, like the one that just landed. And well, we have built him up pretty much identical to that video, with a weapon damage bonus of 100% due to his class alone, a further 50% damage bonus with assault rifles, a 25% weapon damage bonus from his outfit and a 30% damage bonus against armor targets from his armor piercing ammo. In other words, give him an assault rifle with a fast firing rate and Garrus will dominate the battlefield, even on insanity. That is, if he doesn't get himself killed in the process. Now, despite the presence of our Turian Shredder machine, we are now using the Hydra missile launcher that had been sitting behind the counter all the time, because what we're now facing is just going to be pure madness. What we have now coming in are multiple waves of Banshees and Marauders, and there will be at least two Banshees on the battlefield at all times. As soon as we take one down, another one will spawn and unlike with the Brutes earlier, there is not a set number we need to kill to win this fight. This will go on indefinitely until a set timer has run out and we can finally activate the missiles. To make things even worse, the Reaper Destroyer has also begun firing its red laser beam and should we get even remotely close to that, it's game over. There is a bright side to that, however, as the beam does not actually discriminate between friend or foe and Banshees are notoriously eager to get into melee range. This can be exploited to let the beam take care of them, they are instantly killed by it too, although this requires a very good sense of everyone's position on the battlefield, including the beams. What's far more likely is that the occasional Banshee just gets itself melted by accident, which is certainly nothing to complain about either. And yes, just in case you're wondering, this is in fact the big boss fight, to be honest it really can't get much more difficult than this, so we have almost made it to the end. That also means that Medigel can and should be used whenever it's needed, there is no reason to save it at this point and we need Garrus and Tali up on their feet at all times, even if it's just to keep a Banshee occupied for a few seconds. Commander, the destroyer is in range, missiles are ready for launch. As soon as we hear this line, then it's time to run. Like I said, this will continue on indefinitely until we activate the missiles. Targeting is online. Reaper is within range. Fire it! Hit him with everything you've got! Destroyer terminated! Nice work, Edie. Shepard, we're on our way to your location. Roger that. Shepard, over here! Thank God you made it. It didn't look good. It gets worse. Of course it does. Hackett just reported in. Several Sovereign class Reapers, including Harbinger, have broken off from the battle with Sword. They're headed here. Harbinger? It's an opportunity for Hackett to get the Crucible in place. But we have to get a team on board the Citadel to open those arms now. We still don't even know what we'll find when we get to the Citadel. Then that's our job. Find out what we're up against. All right. Saddle up, everybody. 
Get me Admiral Hackett. Here on in, it's a straight shot to the beam. A straight shot with Reapers trying to crush us along the way. We just need to get a handful of troops through. That all? We knew this was going to be a gamble at best. And here we are, ready to make the final push towards the beam. Let's grab two more Paragon points before we go. It could very well be our last chance to do so. Can't think of anyone else I'd rather do this with. Feels like this fight's always been ours to finish. We're in sight of the target. All right, everyone. This is it. Yes, at this point we have one objective and one objective only, run like hell to make it to the beam. Another Reaper has shown up by now and will fire all over the place, but as far as I know we can actually not die to it here, unless we stop moving. Get out of here. I can't stay behind. Don't argue with me, Tally. Don't leave me behind. And this right here is why you want to bring your love interest with you on this mission, as it makes this final dialogue choice even more bittersweet. And yes, I honestly believe that there is only one option worth taking here. I need you to make it out of here alive, Tally. Get back to Rannick. Build yourself home. I have a home. Come back to me. Go!
force was decimated. It's too much! We need to regroup! Fall back to the buildings! Thomas <coughs> wiped out! All forces, retreat! <clears throat> Okay, so it looks like we are not dead yet, but perhaps pretty close to it. The guy in front of us at least is not quite so lucky. What's worse, we have even more enemies approach. Just husks, but still. Luckily, we seem to have picked up a pistol somewhere. Aiming for headshots is extremely difficult in this scenario though, so it's better to go for the less damaging body shots. And don't start to panic too early. The husks will wait a brief moment before delivering a potential killing blow allowing us to take them all out just in time. <clears throat> One last enemy then appears, the infamous Marauder, with its shields a bit more depleted in the Legendary Edition, but still, it's easy to die here if this guy does not go down quick enough. Anderson, you up here too? I followed you up, but we didn't come out in the same place. No, at least I don't think we did. What's your surrounding look like? <sighs> you okay? All right, looks like we have made it. We have already earned ourselves the Patriot achievement. Time to earn two more Paragon points too, and to tell Anderson that we have indeed seen better days. I feel like death. But I'm moving. It's dark. There's human remains scattered. Sounds familiar. I'm in a dark hallway. Reminds me of your description of the Collector Base. <clears throat> Makes sense. Sure. They round them up on Earth, then send the people up here to be processed. Goddamn abomination. I'm gonna keep moving. The sooner we blow these bastards back to hell, the better. The troops don't go on forever. But where the hell are we? Yeah, 
It doesn't look like any part of the Citadel I've been to. Whoa. Anderson? One of the walls here just realigned itself. The place is shifting, changing. There's a chasm here. And more hallways like the one I was in. I think I'm near an exit. Right, seems like we are heading somewhere, whether or not it's the right direction remains to be seen, but it is the only direction we are allowed to go right now. I see something up ahead. Might be a way to cross over. Don't get too far ahead of me. Where do you think you're at? Just found that chasm we were talking about. Hold on. I see something. Control panel, maybe. I'm just gonna go on it. Anderson! Damn it! And with that, we have one last climb up the ramp here ahead of us, at the end of which we will hopefully find Anderson, as well as a way to open the Citadel up for the Crucible to dock. Anderson. Shepard! I can't! I underestimated you, Shepard. What a... I warned you. Control is the means to survival. Control of the Reapers, and of you, if necessary. Mm. They're controlling you! I don't think so, Admiral. Ah yes, look who has shown up. This was to be expected, I think. Now, as you can see, we have several ways to proceed in this conversation, and we absolutely want to make sure to always take the charm or intimidate option on the left whenever it's presented. In my opinion, this just makes for a more satisfying ending, so in this case, let's go with the charm option, although no further morality points are earned at this point. Controlling me is a lot different than controlling a Reaper. Have a little faith. When humanity discovered the mass relay, when we learned there was more to the galaxy than we imagined. There were some who thought the relay should be destroyed. They were scared of what we'd find, terrified of what we might let in. But look at what humanity has achieved. Since that discovery, we've advanced more than the past 10,000 years combined. And the Reapers will do the same for us again, a thousandfold. But... Only if we can harness their ability to control. Bullshit! We destroy them, or they destroy us. And waste this opportunity? Never. And once again, we need to pick one of the options on the left, and we will continue to go with the charm option, Maybe we can get through to him after all, and make him see the error of his ways. You're playing with things you don't understand. With power you shouldn't be able to use. I... don't believe that. If we can control it, why shouldn't it be ours? Because... we're not ready. No. This is the way humanity must evolve. There's always... Another way. I've dedicated my life to understanding the Reapers, and I know with certainty the Crucible will allow me to control them. <clears throat> and then what? Look at the power they wield. Look at what they can do. <sighs> ah. 
I see what they did to you. I took what I wanted from them, made it my own. This isn't about me or you. It's about things so much bigger than all of us. He's wrong. Don't listen to him. And who will you listen to, Shepard? An old soldier stuck in his ways, only able to see the world down the barrel of a gun? And what if he's wrong? What if controlling the Reapers is the answer? Let's see if the third time is indeed the charm. The charm option, at least, raises a very valid concern. What if controlling the Reapers is not even possible? If we destroy the Reapers, this ends today. But if you can't control them... But I can! Are you willing to bet humanity's existence on it? I... No, it will work. You can't, can you? They won't let you do it. No! I'm in control! No one is telling me what to do! Listen to yourself! You're... indoctrinated! No! No! The two of you so self-righteous! Do you think power like this comes easy? There are sacrifices! You've sacrificed too much. Shepard, I... I only wanted to protect humanity. The Crucibles can control them. I know it can. I just... It's not too late. Let us go. We'll do the rest. I... Uh, I can't do that, Commander. Of course you can't. They own you now. You... You'd undo everything I've accomplished. I won't let that happen. Alright, one final dialogue choice then. We can already see that he is starting to waver a bit. It might just take one more well-made point and perhaps he finally sees that in his ambition to gain control, the elusive man has long lost every last bit of it. Because of you, humanity is already undone. That's not true! <coughs> they have the Citadel. They've got us fighting each other, instead of fighting them. I just need to... You've done exactly what the Reapers wanted. You're still doing it because they control you. I... They're too strong. You're stronger. Don't let them win. Break their hold. Don't let them control you. I tried, Shepard. Commander? We did it. Yes, we did. 
It's uh, quite a view. <laughs> Best seats in the house. God. Feels like years since I just sat down. I think you earned a rest. Anderson? Mm. Mm. Stay with me. We're almost through this. You did good, son. You did good. I'm proud of you. Thank you, sir. Anderson? Shepard? Commander? I... What do you need me to do? Nothing's happening. The crystal's not firing. It's gotta be something on your end. Commander Shepard! I don't see... I'm not sure how to... Wake up. What? Where am I? The Citadel. It's my home. Who are you? I am the Catalyst. I thought the Citadel was the Catalyst. No. The Citadel is part of me. I need to stop the Reapers. Do you know how I can do that? Perhaps. I control the Reapers. They are my solution. Solution? To what? Chaos. The created will always rebel against their creators. But we found a way to stop that from happening. A way to restore order. By wiping out organic life? No. We harvest advanced civilizations, leaving the younger ones alone. Just as we left your people alive the last time we were here. But you killed the rest. We help them ascend, so they can make way for new life, storing the old life in Reaper form. I think we'd rather keep our own form. No, you can't. Without us to stop it, synthetics would destroy all organics. We've created the cycle so that never happens. That's the solution. Okay, we have ascended and are now apparently face to face with the Catalyst or at least with its visual representation, the boy from our nightmares, the one we were unable to save back on Earth. It also seems like the boy slash catalyst might have some answers for us, so let's ask him about the three big mysteries of this series. Maybe we can learn something we do not already know. Where did the Reapers come from? Did you create them? My creators gave them form. 
I gave them function. They, in turn, give me purpose. The Reapers are a synthetic representation of my creators. The Leviathan. Yes. They created me to oversee the relations between synthetic and organic life, to establish a connection. They became the first true Reaper. They did not approve, but it was the only solution. You said that before. But how do the Reapers solve anything? Organics create synthetics to improve their own existence, but those improvements have limits. To exceed those limits, synthetics must be allowed to evolve. They must, by definition, surpass their creators. The result is conflict, destruction, chaos. It is inevitable. Reapers harvest all life, organic and synthetic, preserving them before they are forever lost to this conflict. We're at war with the Reapers right now. You may be in conflict with the Reapers, but they are not interested in war. I find that hard to believe. When fire burns, is it at war? Is it in conflict? Or is it simply doing what it was created to do? We are no different. We harvest your bodies, your knowledge, your creations. We preserve it, to be reborn in the form of a new Reaper. Like a cleansing fire, we restore balance. New life, both organic and synthetic, can once again flourish. What do you know about the Crucible? The device you refer to as the Crucible is little more than a power source. However, in combination with the Citadel and the Relays, it is capable of releasing tremendous amounts of energy throughout the galaxy. It is crude, but effective and adaptive in its design. Who designed it? You would not know them, and there is not enough time to explain. We first noted the concept for this device several cycles ago. With each passing cycle, the design has no doubt evolved. Why didn't you stop it? We believe the concept had been eradicated. Clearly, organics are more resourceful than we realized. You said you're the catalyst. What are you? A construct. An intelligence designed eons ago to solve a problem. I was created to bring balance. To be the catalyst for peace between organics and synthetics. So you're just an AI? In as much as you are just an animal, I embody the collective intelligence of all Reapers. But you were created. Correct. By who? By ones who recognized that conflict would always arise between synthetics and organics. I was first created to oversee the relations between synthetic and organic life, to establish a connection. But our efforts always ended in conflict, so a new solution was required. The Reapers? Precisely. I met your creators. They told me what you did to them. We did as we were expected. They said you betrayed them. That you turned them into Harbinger. When they asked that I solve the problem of conflict, they failed to understand they were part of the problem themselves. The flaws of their organic reasoning could not perceive this. They lacked the foresight to understand their destruction was part of the very solution they required. Well. They've joined this war now. And I welcome their involvement. I am only facilitating their request. Now, both dialogue options here are very much representative of the mindset that the Reapers have been underestimating us, or that they, at the very least, do not fully understand us. Ultimately, though, it does not really matter which one we pick. But you're taking away our future. Without a future, we have no hope. Without hope, we might as well be machines program to do what we're told. You have hope, more than you think. The fact that you were standing here, the first organic ever, proves it. But it also proves my solution won't work anymore. So now what? We find a new solution. Why are you telling me this? 
Why help me? You have altered the variables. What do you mean? The crucible changed me, created new possibilities, but I can't make them happen. If there is to be a new solution, you must act. It is now in your power to destroy us. But be warned, others will be destroyed as well. The Crucible will not discriminate. All synthetics will be targeted. Even you are partly synthetic. What exactly will happen? Your Crucible device appears to be largely intact. However, the effects of the blast will not be constrained to the Reapers. Technology you rely on will be affected. But those who survive should have little difficulty repairing the damage. There will still be losses, but no more than what has already been lost. Well, this is what we have been fighting for all this time, and it was Anderson's last wish to have us destroy the Reapers. But the question here is very much appropriate. Will that actually achieve long-lasting peace? But the Reapers will be destroyed? Yes, but the peace won't last. Soon, your children will create synthetics, and then the chaos will come back. There has to be another way. There is. You could instead use the energy of the Crucible to seize control of the Reapers. So... The elusive man was right after all. Yes, but he could never have taken control. Because we already controlled him. But I can. You will die. You will control us, but you will lose everything you have. How can I control the Reapers if I'm dead? Your corporeal form will be dissolved, but your thoughts and even your memories will continue. Your connection to your kind will be lost, though you will remain aware of their existence. Alright, looks like the elusive man was at least partially right after all. And unlike him, we do in fact have what it takes to control the Reapers, although it appears as if there is a hefty price to pay for it. But the Reapers will obey me? Yes. We will be yours to control and direct as you see fit. Mm. There is another solution. Synthesis. And that is? Add your energy to the Crucibles. The chain reaction will combine all synthetic and organic life into a new framework, a new DNA. Explain how my energy can be added to the Crucible. Your organic energy, the essence of who and what you are, will be broken down and then dispersed. To do what exactly? The energy of the Crucible, released in this way, will alter the matrix of all organic life in the galaxy. Organics seek perfection through technology. Synthetics seek perfection through understanding. Organics will be perfected by integrating fully with synthetic technology. Synthetics, in turn, will finally have full understanding of organics. It is the ideal solution. Now that we know it is possible, it is inevitable we will reach synthesis. Why couldn't you do it sooner? We have tried a similar solution in the past, but it has always failed. Why? Because, because the organics were not ready. It is not something that can be forced. You are ready, and you may choose it. Right, the way he tells it, this actually sounds like a solution with surprisingly few downsides, aside perhaps from the fact that altering the DNA of every organic and synthetic being in the galaxy, that is not exactly something a single person should decide about. I... don't know. Why not? Synthetics are already part of you. Can you imagine your life without them? And there will be peace? The cycle will end. The Reapers will cease their harvest and the civilizations preserved in their forms will be connected to all of us. 
Synthesis is the final evolution of all life. The paths are open, but you have to choose. All right, here we are then. We have made it to the big decision point and as a result unlock most of the remaining achievements now. One last achievement still needs to be obtained, but for that we need to make a choice and we are presented with three solutions. Number one, destroy the Reapers to end the war, but destroy all synthetics along with it, including the Geth and most likely Edie as well. Very importantly, this will apparently not be an end to the man vs machine struggle, also described as chaos, as new synthetics will inevitably be built and this time the Reapers won't be there to erase it all before those synthetics can take over. So perhaps solution number two, control the Reapers but sacrifice ourselves in the process. This would apparently achieve peace too, although whether or not control over the Reapers would last forever is very much unclear, especially if we consider that even their own creators, the Leviathans, ultimately lost control. And that's not to mention that this would also basically fulfill the elusive man's ambitions, something we have been actively fighting against all this time. So perhaps option number three, synthesis. Also requiring Shepard's sacrifice, but allowing organics and synthetics to seemingly live happily together, an outcome that the Catalyst even describes as ultimately inevitable, so why wait if it all leads to this sooner or later anyway? Well, while the Catalyst might frame synthesis as the best of the three solutions, he does somewhat glance past the fact that we would basically decide to alter the DNA of every single living being in the galaxy, without any of them actually having a choice in the matter. And speaking of choice, yes, it is time to make one now, but for the first and only time in this series, I will not make it for you. I simply do not want to dictate the way this story ends, since all three endings are unique in their own ways, and I want you to have the opportunity to experience the one you think fits best, or even all of them, if you so wish. So here's what we're going to do. In just a moment, the video will end, and I will display all possible endings on screen, so that you can select the one you want to continue with. There is even a somewhat secret fourth option, but that one will not unlock the final legend achievement, just so you are aware. Whatever you decide to choose, you will not hear me talk over any of the endings, so let me take this moment here to say thank you. Like I said, Mass Effect has been a part of this channel since its very beginning, and it is a strange feeling to now see it all come to an end. I had honestly never imagined that it would take me over 7 years to get here, but here we are, 180 episodes since the first one, from a 20 minute adventure ending on Eden Prime to a 2 hour finale ending with a choice to make. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it, I certainly did, and I am extremely grateful for every single one of you who watched even just a single episode, or maybe even the entire journey. You have undoubtedly earned the right to make this final decision yourself, so go ahead and pick the ending that you want to see, and maybe let me know in the comments which one you think is the best. And with that, let's wrap things up for the series. The trilogy is over and I very much hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave one last thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can of course, as always, go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.petecomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all so, so much for watching this, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.